Well, howdy, YouTube. Unky Joe here. Unky Joe's Playhouse. I'm back. Yeah, I know it's been a few days since I did my last video, but I took a little break. Haven't been feeling real well. Had some troubles with mom. She had to go in the hospital. She had uh, some respiratory problems, but she's uh, she's been in there a couple of weeks now. She's doing better. In fact, she's going to be coming home this Friday. In fact, this video will be posted on Friday, so... Uh, wish her well if you're so inclined and uh, hopefully we'll get her back here home and into the flow of things. Now a special shout out again to Willie Howe at, uh, uh, at his channel uh, for sending me this hat uh, months ago. It's almost been, it's probably been a year now I guess Willie you sent me this hat and uh, I wanted to wear it in honor of you today. I just watched a couple of videos on Willie's channel. He's been doing some Synology videos so if you're interested in Synology go over there Willie has a great uh, wealth and dearth of information uh, on every subject he covers. So while we're on the subject of thank yous and shout outs, I want to do a special shout out to a subscriber by the name of Ben King. Ben is over in the UK. I've got a lot of subscribers over in the UK. I appreciate each and every one of you. But Ben was kind enough to send us a couple of Western Digital 3 terabyte red drives. He heard me lamenting about uh, wanting to replace uh, some of those two gig hard drives that are that have got about 30,000 hours on them in my Xmenology NAS. So Ben uh, graciously sent these to me, shipped them all the way over from the UK at his own expense. And uh, I just wanted to say he sent me two of them. Like I said, special shout out to Ben. We'll be doing a video on putting these drives into the Xmenology NAS because I want to show you what's involved in that procedure in order to get that done and uh, so uh, be on the lookout for that video coming up as well so I, I want to talk about um, some changes we made here at Unky Joe's Playhouse and and then I'll uh, start playing the video this could end up being a long video and it's about used equipment again and what we've done with it and some of the stuff I'm playing around here and this video is also about the bench back here the desk and and the bench I'm sorry the desk and the bench as you can see I've got some equipment up there and this is the machine uh, if I can get my hand to work that's a machine we're gonna be talking about today uh, going into some detail about it but we've also made some changes now that I've brought on a partner and Jerry is normally here uh, three or four days out of the week and then the other portion of the time he's in school and and working from his home so I wanted to have a landing space for him to be able to get work done or if he needs to do some research he's got a desk back there now that he can do that on and we've we put a phone on that desk for him and everything uh, but today we're going to be covering again uh, some we're going to go over some old equipment I had laying around we ran across uh, some used equipment uh, a few days ago and decided to go ahead and put it to the test and you know we did a previous video on a core 2 duo and how limited you are with functionality on that. And then I ran across this other board uh, that we had in inventory. So I decided, let's do a video on that and show you what the potential is. So I'm going to quit yammering on here. We're going to go ahead and play out uh, the series of videos I recorded. And uh, then we'll come back at the end of that. All right, so we made uh, some changes at Unky Joe's Playhouse that I want to share with you. We are now officially calling this the Jerry Desk as in Jerry of Jerry rigged with a cup of Joe. Um, actually, it's just another workstation, but we're going we're gonna to let Jerry think this is his desk. So we got the dual monitor set up, so we've got a webcam up there, keyboard, mouse. And it used to be that this was connected to this machine down here, but as you can see now, we've given this machine a new name. It's called MCS Bench. And the one above that I built out of used parts a couple of months ago and it's going to be our gaming rig is now MCS triple or 003 and that is our daily driver workstation for Jerry's desk now this unit has an AM or I'm sorry an Intel i5 4570 processor 16 gig of RAM it has an SSD drive in there 256 gig it has a 1 terabyte spinning drive and you notice that I've moved my Blu-ray drive over to this machine uh, from this machine down here. For us, it just makes more sense 
to make this unit on the floor a bench unit as you can see on the top that is an actual drive caddy so if we need to do file transfers or image recovery something like that on a hard drive we can plug both three and a half inch and two and a half inch hard drives in there or SSDs and be able to access it this has an older i5 processor in it it is running Windows 10 it's got 16 gig of RAM and we're also putting Linux Mint on it in a dual boot configuration. That's what Jerry's working on right now. So in addition to that, I picked up a, an old style uh, KVM switch, IO gear KVM switch, so that we can uh, also have another plug here for a workstation if we need to work on one. So this unit down here will power the bench. Uh, for, for research and testing of other operating systems and that kind of thing. And then we have a station here set aside uh, for client uh, maintenance and whatnot. We got the switch mounted on the wall and we will be taking care of those cables at some point. And then we have up here our power monitoring devices so that when we're doing some testing or whatnot we can also measure the power draw of devices. And as you can see, my assistant here is, uh, we'll put it on hat cam. This is hat cam, head cam right there. So, Jerry, turn to the left. And see, see how that works? Jerry, turn to the right. All right, yeah, see how that works? It's great. <laughs> head cam. Not the kind of head cam you're thinking of. So we'll call it hat cam. Anyway, uh, so he's getting Linux uh, Mint 191 installed on this unit and configured so we can do a boot between that and Windows 10. That is the current status of our workstation, the work desk named Jerry. And uh, you see I have a picture of my relatives here as on my mouse pad. It's my kids. This is my older sister <laughs> and this is my younger sister right here. And they're they're quite beautiful. And uh, and uh, just anyway there we go. So there's our workstation set up. So uh, I, we ran across this, while we were doing inventory, we ran across this MSI board. It's a CSM H61M-P32. It's uh, supposed to, it's a H61 chipset. I, for the life of me, cannot remember where this came out of. Um, it does support DDR3. I don't know whether it has an i5 or an i7 or an i3 processor. But what we're going to do is put this into a unit. Uh, the one that my assistant is working on right here, Jerry. He's working on an old Intel Pentium dual CPU with DDR2 RAM. So we're pulling the board out of this. And we're going to put this uh, H61 in there just to see what uh, the specs are on this motherboard. See if it's worth maybe building a, a backup unit for a client out of uh, re, you know I like to reuse the parts but the one that he's working on now is just too damn old to to spend any money or time on uh, with DDR2 RAM so it's not going to be very fast so it'll be interesting to see what the specs are on this it also has a PCI Express 16x slot so we can add an add-on video card if we needed to this unit, this board is so old. Well, it's from 2013. I shouldn't say it's that old. It's six years old. It, you notice it doesn't have any HDMI. It's only got a VGA connection. Serial still has parallel port. It does have gigabit Ethernet. That's also a deal killer. If it didn't have gigabit Ethernet, I would throw it away. Uh, it has no USB 3 ports, but you can easily. It's got a PCIe and a PCI Express. You can easily add. USB 3 to this if you needed it. What I'm wondering is will it run Windows 10 with uh, 4 or 8 gig of RAM and I know it'll run Linux but will it run Linux Mint or or would it run KDE Neon that kind of thing. Uh, so it'll, it'll make for a good experiment uh, on building another use system like I said I never throw I never throw parts away that, that still have some little bit of value and and it seems to me this board would have a little bit of value so we will uh, find out uh, once we get it mounted and, and booted up. So here's my assistant hard at work getting this old, you can see it's an old, 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 old penny and motherboard. Surprisingly it has a PCI Express slot on it. It has two of them, 16x. 
but looky here it's got an old IDE ATA 100 or 133 actually not a 100 but a 133 connector uh, it also had four serial ATA ports but uh, but it also had the IDE controller and the floppy drive controller, so that's how old this port is. Uh, but this uh, ISO power supply, these are really good power supplies. I hardly ever had any of these fail. Watch it fail now that I've said it won't fail. Uh, so what we're going to do is put that board, that MSI board in here, and just see if we can't salvage this. This thing's going in the junk, it's only got, or in the recycle bin, it's only got DDR2 RAM in here, it's not really worth it wouldn't even probably play a high def video by today's standards so we'll see how it goes all right so what we found is that this is indeed uh, as you can see Jerry's got it all mounted up inside the case um, we did find that it is an i3 processor what was the it was near three and a half gigahertz processor 3.4 gig processor right sounds right and I've got uh, four gig of RAM and here. I had some DDR3 RAM laying around. We're about to install a uh, 500 gig hard drive in there. Uh, it had an old 80 gig in there. I don't want to use it. It's no bueno por caca. Uh, so we're gonna mount the 500 gig hard drive in there and use it. Uh, we'll try installing uh, Windows 10, of course, on there first. Uh, I know it's gonna need a BIOS update. The BIOS on this thing is back from 2011 um, which if the board was manufactured in 2013 I don't know how it has a BIOS from 2011 but hey stranger things have happened so once Jerry gets the hard drive mounted in there then we'll start our install of Windows 10 and uh, we'll see how uh, successful we are with that install now the other thing you're going to notice is when we originally started out building that bench unit or building that test unit I had handed Jerry a 500 gig spinning hard drive. Well, I don't know what possessed me to put a spinning hard drive in there. I hate spinning hard drives for operating system installs. You know, once you've gone to an SSD drive and you get those 10, 15 second boot times, uh, waiting around on a spinning hard drive to catch up with the operating system, especially Windows 10, I just don't recommend. So, we had some SSDs come in. I ordered a couple of... Uh, 260 gig uh, SanDisk uh, hard drives or SSD drives in for a client. Uh, they're about 40, 40, 45 bucks a piece. I cannot believe how cheap SSD drives have gotten. So uh, since this is that client's computer, actually, uh, so since it was client's computer, we went ahead and threw it in there to kind of put it through its paces. So, all right. So let's be really clear. The machine that I'm running on right now is that unit that we created. Um, so I've actually got OBS, that's why you're not seeing my lovely face. But I'm up to the desktop of this machine. I'm going to go ahead and run Specy, give you an idea of, of the uh, specifications of this machine. So uh, if we go to the CPU, it's an Intel Core i3-3240. It's a two-core, four-thread CPU. Uh, virtualization, hyper-threading are both supported. You can see the fan speeds, the core clock and the bus speed for this unit and both cores are running uh, within normal temperature ranges. The uh, RAM is DDR3. There's four gigabit, two, uh, I'm sorry, there's four, two total slots in there, or two total uh, RAM chips in there and I can add two more. I think I can take this unit to 16 gig uh, I'd have to look up the motherboard to be sure, but here are the motherboard specs. It's an MSI CSM-861M-P32-W8 or MS7788. It's an Intel Ivy Bridge. Uh, let's see the voltage. You see the voltage is down there. Now, the graphics, I went ahead. I was going to use the onboard graphics, but I got such a horrible picture capture with OBS then I went ahead, I had a HD Radeon 6450 laying around, so I went ahead and put that in. And we use this video card with some of our tests. We actually test all three video cards in this video, so you'll see what the results of those were. Uh, but that's the graphics card. And then for storage, of course, we're using an SSD drive. Just a little cheap $40 or $50, 250 gig hard, uh, SanDisk hard drive. It's perfectly fine for, for what we need it for. And then for the uh, network card, it is a Realtek PCI 
uh, Express Gigabit Network Adapter. All right, so now I've run uh, Core Temp on this machine, so you can get an idea idea of the temperatures and the uh, power usage. So it's an LGA 1155 Core i3 3240 CPU running at uh, 3.4 gigahertz. It is currently pulling about 12 watts. Uh, the TJ Max on this 105C, it's running at about anywhere from 35 to 38C. Uh, and it's about under 40% load because I'm running OBS Studio. Uh, now what I'd like to do next is uh, show you the benchmark test for the SSD drive using Crystal Dismark and we've got those uh, status of that here. So on sequ uh, sequential reads I'm getting about 283.1 megabytes per second. Write speeds are 237 and then you can see the results of the 4K test, the sequential reads and writes, and the 4K sequential reads and writes on that SSD drive. So uh, I was curious, so I also, let me uh, see if I can shrink this, I want to do this side by side. I also did a Crystal Dismark test on my Synology NAS just for shits and giggles. So I ran this across the network with a mapped drive letter, drive letter U for, you know, Unky Joe's Playhouse. And you can see I'm getting really good read and write speeds across my network. In fact, my 4K reads and writes on the reads were better with my <laughs> Synology NAS than we, they were with my SSD drive. Now the writes, of course, were better with the SSD than they were with the uh, Synology NAS. Now I also tested it with my Xpenology NAS just to see if there was any change in the speed. So I'm going to try and put these side by side here for y'all to see. You see the the differences between the Synology and the Xpenology are uh, on on the 4k uh, writes. For some reason my Synology NAS or Xpenology NAS, pardon me, gets better write speeds on the 4k Q32Ti test than my Synology does. Now I did not run this test more than once so that could be you know, a, an aberrant number that could be just a glitch in the matrix, as they say, when I ran that test. But it seems that my 4K reads and writes on the Q32T1 are better with my NAS uh, in general, speaking in general, than they are on my SSD drive. Um, and actually, they're pretty close on my uh, Xpenology. Uh, the 4K reads and writes uh, are, are not too bad compared to the SSD drive. Now the next thing I did was I did some Cinebench testing with the uh, the onboard graphics, which is a HD 2500, and then I popped in the uh, HD 6450, did some uh, Cinebench tests with that, and then we had a GT 640 we popped in there to see what an improvement we would get. So let's start with the uh, 2500 Cinebench test, and as you can see, it's abysmal. Uh, with the internal HD graphics, we get a Cinebench and OpenGL of about 9.65 frames per second. So, you won't be gaming on this machine. And uh, But I will tell you, what you will be doing is, I'm running OBS on it now. As you can see, it's working fine. Of course, I'm not recording from a webcam. I'm just doing my voice over here. Uh, but it's working, you know, remarkably well. Uh, but yeah, with the internal graphics, you're getting about 9.65 frames per second. Now, if we switch over to the HD 6450, the Radeon that I have laying around, it jumps up to 13.45 frames per second, but as you can see, it's still not going to be good enough to do any real gaming on this thing. Um, if I had a better video card, of course, we'd get better results, and as you'll see in a minute... Uh, that is the truth because when I put the GT640 in, my frames per second went up to 52.27. So that would allow you to, to play some, you know, relevant games. Uh, you're not going to play any current <laughs> blockbuster video games on this thing. But not bad for a machine that's 9 or 10 years old, huh? Now the CPU uh, score did not change. Let me bring that up. As you can see, the three, uh, it stays at 300 CBs no matter what video card you have in there because it's, the CPU is different than the graphics processor. But 
I'm still getting 300 CBs on this machine, and that's right about what I should be getting 300 to 302 CBs compared to to others uh, out there, others test results. Now, what's also interesting is I did uh, some heaven benchmarks, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring those up next. All right, so let's cover our uh, heaven benchmarks, and uh, we'll go with the first one. I'll bring that up here on the screen so you can see it. So. My frames per second was 18.3. This is on the NVIDIA GeForce GT640 on this unit running DirectX uh, 11 with 1680 by 1050 full screen, custom preset, high quality, and I was getting about 18.3 frames per second, and the max I got was about 40. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, well, where are the test results for the HD2500? I'm sorry, for the Intel 2500 HD and for the HD 6450. Well, Heaven would run on them, but the frame rates were down uh, below 10. So I didn't bother to do them go any further because the uh, benchmark test would have taken way too long. But as you can see, these are with uh, custom presets, high quality. The next test was done with the same video card. And this was done with Direct uh, 3D, not uh, DirectX 9 3D. Uh, it was uh, capped at 1280 by 720 in a windowed mode, and we got our frames per second up to 29.3, and our max went up to 50. So we got a little bit better performance when we lowered the resolution. And then the uh, last one I did on Heaven uh, was uh, DirectX 3D. Uh, full screen 1680 by 1050 custom preset medium quality and we were able to get about 17.6 frames per second uh, and the maximum at 32.5 so not great benchmark tests and then I ran the valley benchmark just for shits and giggles and uh, you see it's misidentifying it as Windows 8 but it is Windows 10 but this was DirectX 3D uh, uh, DirectX 11 3D 1680 by 1050 custom preset and high quality and on that I was able to get 21.8 frames per second and a maximum of about 39.8 so those are the test results on this machine well there you go so we put that machine through its paces and remarkably I had that epiphany the other night to go ahead I said instead of filming it via the camera shooting at the screen which is not ideal why don't we put OBS on here? That would be another good test to see if I could run OBS on that older, slower system. Now, uh, initially, I had used the internal HD 2500 graphics card on that. I just The picture quality was not what it should be. So I went ahead and put the HD 6450 AMD card I had laying around in there. It's actually the only free video card I have to put into these systems to test it. And uh, remarkably, I was able to run OBS without any problems at all, and the picture quality is pretty good. Now, that monitor is uh, 16... Oh, hell, I forget the specs on it. Uh, it's not a standard high-def monitor, that Samsung, so I had to uh, I had to do the, capture at the native resolution. So you may see boxes on the bottom and top of the uh, screen that I filmed that on, but uh, it worked out. And you saw the test results we got. They're they're abysmal. I mean, frankly, the frames per second are not good. It won't be a gaming machine. But, man, this would make a really good workstation. We just wanted to play around with it. I mean, I've had this uh, wild need for some reason to play around with used equipment. And, you know me, I'm the king of cheap. And I just wanted to see what you can still do with a machine like this. Uh, because, you know, there's no reason you couldn't put... You know, if you're not a fan of Windows, you can throw Linux Mint on here. I've got Linux Mint running on it. I've also got Linux Peppermint running on it. They both work remarkably well on this machine with an SSD and if you were to give it to a family member that just did, you know, banking and browsing the internet, it would work fine. So it, it works fine for a workstation. It plays high def video. OBS works on it remarkably well. Now I didn't test it with a webcam like I said, but I did screen captures and I recorded the audio on that machine instead of doing a voiceover later. So as you can see, it, it perform remarkably well for that old of a machine so don't necessarily throw those old machines away uh, they can be repurposed and I'm all for you know for years I have given away machines to to people that can't afford computers to family members 
Um, and you know, they if they work, why why throw them in the landfill and, and waste the resources? Uh, and uh, this MSI board's a pretty good board. Uh, like I've said, I've had it since 11 or 13, 2011 or 2013. I'm not sure which one. So now I want to uh, cover a couple of subjects or a couple of items that are on my mind. You're going to probably notice I have not been very active with my posts on social media. Um, no, it used to be when you posted a YouTube video and you had a Twitter account, it would automatically post your video to Twitter. It doesn't do that anymore. That's all right because I'm moving away from Twitter. And the other thing is I am not posting them on Patreon anymore. I am, I'm just using Patreon as a way for people that don't like PayPal to donate to the channel. So, but I won't be cross-posting these videos on Patreon anymore. And I will probably at some point catch up with the video postings on Facebook for those of you that, that get your notifications there. But uh, Twitter and, and Patreon are just, you know, I'll probably end up getting rid of my Twitter account. I, I will keep Patreon because it is a donation source and I do appreciate all the donations I get there. But again, I'm not going to be putting the videos on Patreon per se. Now, the other thing I'm going to be doing, and I hope I don't disappoint anybody, but I'm going to slow down on the process of putting out videos. You know, at some points I was putting out a video every day for weeks, and, and then I would put out three videos a week or sometimes two videos a week. And they're getting a lot of views and they're getting a lot of comments, and I really appreciate them. But I, rather than focusing on quantity of videos, I really want to focus on quality of videos. And I want to present stuff that you guys find interesting. And I want to try and get my production standards up. I mean, come on, frankly, I dress, I dress like a slob <laughs> for these videos. It's not real professional looking. I, I, and Unky Joe's Playhouse has always been kind of a hobby of mine. But I kind of want to take it up to the next level. So Jerry and I are working on some new production stuff. We're working on lighting. We're working on maybe setting up a set, that kind of thing. So let me know what you think about that as well down in the comments section. Do you like you know my relaxed kind of style, or would you like to see some more uh, professional uh, production standards on the video? Well, you know me, I can ramble on for hours, so let's end the video here. And don't forget, we hope you found it entertaining and informative. I want both of those things to come across in these videos. Please leave your comments down below. Technical questions, guys, I'm just too busy to answer your technical questions. But Google is a great source. So if you have a question, if it's a simple question, I will try and answer it. I will do my best or ask other people in the comments section. Maybe they can help you. I don't have, I'm getting inundated with emails now, technical support emails. And that's not what, frankly, the channel is for. I present the ideas to you and, and I depend on you guys to research it. And I'll, hand, I'll help you as much as I can, but I, I just don't have time to answer in detail some of these questions. So hope you're not disappointed, but I have other things I've got to do. So leave your comments down in the comment section. Give us a thumbs up down below if you liked it. Uh, let's see, donate. Oh, look who's sneaking into the video frame here. What are you doing? Hey, you want to come be on TV? Come here. Come here, Snickle. Somebody wants to come be on TV. There she is. You know who this is. This is Maddie May. Yeah, she's the love of my life next to my spouse. So anyway, donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal and Patreon, and it helps to buy her dog food. Yes, it helps to buy my sweetie dog food. And again, come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.